We're going to keep things moving here on Box to Row. We're joined by a gentleman in his fourth season as the head men's basketball coach at Old Corn State. Right now, the Braves sit at number four in the SWAC, nine and five in SWAC play. And as a matter of fact, I have won five straight games, going to be on the road on Saturday at Prairie View AM. Landon Bussey joins us here on Box to Row. What's going on, Coach Bussey? Appreciate you joining us here on the program. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Great. It's, it's great to have you. Just your thoughts on the season to this point. You've got, what, four games remaining. And really, you're, you're right in position, not that far out of first place in this SWAC, which has been very competitive this year. Absolutely. Um, still a lot of basketball left to be played. Um, got some really um, big games coming up this weekend. They could put us in a great place to finish out the year strong. Um, but, of course, you know, Southern and Grambling has done an unbelievable job of taking the lead um, in the SWAC conference right now. So our biggest thing is, you know, just trying to finish strong and get some momentum going into the SWAC tournament. And hopefully we can have a good showing in Birmingham. What's been the difference these last five games? As I'm just Because, I mean, the bottom line uh, would be that you know, when you go back a couple of weeks ago, you were four and five in conference play towards the bottom. Now you're 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 mid to upper part of the swag now. Yeah, man. At one point in time, we was one and three in conference. Uh, we won three in conference, and the players, coaches, and and everybody could have just you know quit if they wanted to. Um, but you know, we we found a way to fight. We found a way to you know fight the adversity and challenges and get ourselves back in competition to compete for a regular season championship but i think the biggest change that we made is you know just the buy-in i think guys is buying a little more to the defensive side of the ball i think everyone's starting to understand their role and how they can add value to the program and not everybody just out there just being for themselves. so i think it's more of a team now um we did we 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 we, we, we hit a, we hit a, we hit a bump we hit a bump at one point when we was like i said we was four and five lost two games back to back to grambling um and southern and after that, we just try to turn the corner. Our practices got better, the attention, the details, the buy-in, um, everything. But more so than anything, um, we're doing a great job in defensive end right now. Is there something that you referenced back to these last couple of seasons? Because, I mean, at the end of the day, you finished first or tied for first the last couple of seasons, appeared in two NITs in back-to-back -back years. Is there something you referenced uh, from the previous two seasons? Um, absolutely. I mean, we just referenced that, you know, at the end of the day, we're still the regular season back-to-back -back champions. Um, so, you know, it's still good basketball left to be played. We're still a dominant basketball team. We've had um, we done an unbelievable job of just um, building a tradition here in the championship program. So let's not take that away from us. Um, your success isn't determined when you're one and three. It's determined what you do when you're one and three. And so I just continue to try to preach the message to the guys that we're not done, like, right? We just need to get one win. One will lead to two, but we can't have one loss lead to two losses. Continue to chip away every single day in practice and keep getting better. And before you know it, you'll be at the top. Landon Bussey again in his fourth season as the head men's basketball coach at Alcorn State. He joins us here on Box to Road. As you, you all that are watching, you notice I've got my Baltimore Orioles hat on. He's a Baltimore native. I'll ask him a little bit more about that later on in the program. Look, I mean, you talk. I, I don't. There have been some brutal schedules, especially when you look at the SWAC. I don't know if there's a team that's had a more brutal schedule than you. November eighth, you play. You uh, play your alma mater at home, uh, Xavier of Louisiana. You don't come back home until January the twentieth, and you've got all of the. You know, you plan all of these these teams, Maryland, George Washington. Can you speak to sort of how? that stretch was for this team it was rough i mean it was rough when you're you know practicing hard and you know, your athletes aren't seeing any benefit or, or any reward behind it so it was rough to come in every single day in practice and you know you start as a coach start to lose your confidence players lose their confidence and just trying to figure out ways that how can you turn the program around how can you change a lot of different things um but you know i think that you know we have a lot of guys who've been here before guys who've been through adversity, been through challenges, things like that. And, you know, they just stuck to the course. Um, that was our biggest thing, to stick to the course, stick to the course. But when you go play Maryland and Michigan State and um, 
uh, Maryland, TCU, Michigan State, Arkansas, Clemson. TCU, Clemson, um, and those schools like that. And, you know, you're just getting um, really beat up on a roll with the travels, uh, you know, players getting sick, if it's COVID, it's the flu, or whatever the case may be, it starts to really mentally um, break, the, break you down. So our biggest thing was just stay with the course, stay with the course, stay with the course, and eventually, you know, um, the storm will pass by. And then once we get in the conference, we'll be fine. Why this schedule? Is that by design? I know, obviously, a lot of those are going to be um, so-called money games that will give revenue to, to your program, to the athletics uh, department as a whole. I mean, is that I mean, why such a brutal schedule? Is that by design? And, and, and does it, in fact, help to prepare you for conference play? Um, well, of course, a lot of it's for, you know, guaranteed money games, but a lot of it is just to uh, um, get an opportunity to travel the world for these young men to get out of Lower Mississippi for a little bit, but also to play in rough environments like Michigan, Michigan State. And you hope those rough environments help you this weekend um, down at Prairie View in Texas Southern to go on the road and figure out that you've been here before and that you could, you know, be successful here. Um, and I think it helped us in the past. You know, I, game I can remember is Bethune Cookman. Uh, which was the ESPN two game, and it was it was a, it's a rough environment down there, and we was able to go on the road and have success and come out winning that basketball game. Um, but that also started in non conference, so all traveling on the road with the fans, and uh, sometimes you might not get the best whistle. So just find a way to be successful. Of course, Landon Bussey, the head men's basketball coach at Alcorn State, joins us here on the program. Jeremiah Kendall's one of the leaders. Uh, one of your players and, and one of the leaders in terms of, of scoring in the conference. Speak to how he's played this season. Um, he, make, he makes my life easy. Um, we can't score and, you know, we're, we were in a little shooting slump, you know, to give him a ball to maybe just get to the free throw line. When you can throw the ball to a guy on the block right there and they can play with their back to the basket, it makes your job a lot easier. Um, but he has done an unbelievable job of just scoring at a very high rate. Um, his rebounding is pretty good. And most of anything, his defense is getting better and better each day. Um, so he's starting to become a complete basketball player. Um, he's always been great on the offensive side, but now his defense, is, the defensive side, is what's really impressing me. I mentioned him because he's the leading scorer and one of the, as I mentioned, one of the leading scorers in the SWAC. Who is who else is really stepping up for you, uh, it, whether it be the last five games or throughout the entire season? Um, Jeremiah um, Gambriel, he has stepped up. Um, you know, he's right now shooting 42% from the three-point line. Um, he spaces the floor out for us. Um, he's a scorer who has been very proven in this league, transfer from Prairie View. So he's a guy who has helped us out a lot. And Byron Joshua has done an unbelievable job, too, as far as just leading the program, getting his teammates involved, and sharing the ball, and um, done an unbelievable job rebounding as well, too. So I think overall just been a collective group of guys. Each, each night it can be somebody different. It could be Jalen Hawkins. It could be – um, DK Thorne. It could be, you know, Stephen Byer. It could be Mike. You know, it just all depends who it is that given night, who who has the hot hand. But, you know, right now it's collectively team effort um, for us getting over these games. Um, and it starts on the defensive side of the ball. Again, Landon Bussey, the head men's basketball coach at Alcorn State, joins us here on the program. What do you remember about those days at Xavier as a player and then also as an assistant coach where you all had a lot of success. And of course, Danton Jackson, I believe was your head coach. And then uh, was the, uh, was your head coach as a player. And then you assisted him uh, there at Xavier. Well, I remember, remember just the tough practice that we had. And, you know, as a player, you just didn't understand why you're practicing hard, why, you know, film sets are so long. Why is, you know, every little detail is so critical. Um, you just didn't get it. Um, but now, being that I'm in this role, you understand that the preparation that it takes to be successful and dominant at this level um, is needed. So that's main, one of the main things, just the preparation, the preparation, the tough practices, the, um, the attention to detail, holding athletes accountable. Um, I learned that a lot from when I played and when I was an assistant coach. And then, of course, Prairie View a and uh, you're on the road against PV on Saturday, you got the victory over uh, the Panthers wanted another former or one of your former teams uh, back on January 22nd. What do you have to do to complete the uh, season sweep of the Panthers? 
um, we got to keep them out the paint. Um, they do a great job of getting inside the paint. They do a great job in transition. So, um, and I know you got a big kid over there, Miles, who's doing an unbelievable job on the glass. So we just got to do a good job of keeping them off the glass and keeping them off the paint. If we get out in transition, we make shots, if we play inside out, I think we'll be fine. We, won't, we don't want to get in a three-point shooting contest with them. Um, we want them to shoot threes, and we want to drive the ball. If I can take you back, you know, to that first season, six and 17 season, very tough. But prior to that, it was, you know, it was just tough for all corn state going all the way around. Second season, much better. The last uh, two seasons, uh, you've won. Uh, well, the second season, well, the last two seasons, I should say, you've won um, the SWAC or you finished first in the SWAC, I should say. Secret to your success. Why have you been able to be so successful? Uh, as the head men's basketball coach at Alcorn State? Um, I think it's just, you know, stars were recruiting, you know, trying to find good players that can um, make your job easy. You know, guys who just go out there and just um, put the ball in the basket and um, play both sides of the ball. Um, that's the biggest thing is just trying to find really good basketball players. Another thing is just, you know, having a strong coaching staff who helps me push these guys in practice and making sure they go hard, uh, making sure our preparation is to key. You no, know, very big on preparation, very big on um, scouting reports and game plans and practice plans and, um, you know, making sure guys is, you know, curfew and everything, you know, everything that leads up to um, the game. That's why I'm big. I, I believe the game is already played um, before the game. Um, you know, what you're putting in, what you're putting in your body, how much film are you watching? Are you stretching? Um, are you going to the training room? Are you, you know, taking care of your business off the court? Are you being a good person? Um, so I think that's the biggest thing is right there is, you know, just trying to find a way to be the most prepared team going into each game. Being a guy from Baltimore, right? Like you've been basically since you started out at Livingstone, that's where you first started in terms of a playing ball transfer to Xavier, Xavier, Prairie View, A&M, uh, all across that. You've been in, you've been in the deep South now. Now you're, you, you know, I'm, I'm sure you've gotten pretty acclimated uh, to that, did you ever foresee yourself, a guy being from Baltimore, ending up, you know, in the deep south where you're having a lot of success as a basketball coach? No. Um, actually, when I was at Xavier, we actually played Alcorn. Uh, when I was in college, we beat Alcorn. Um, never in my many years where I thought that I would be the head coach of Alcorn State University. Um, haven't been back to Baltimore as far as living-wise since I was in high school in 2005. Of course, I go home. Um, to visit family throughout the year, but um, never would have thought that, you know, it's just, it's amazing how, you know, your life and your journey takes you in different places that, you know, you don't, you don't determine, you don't determine, you just, you know, you just, you know, you just follow the, the Lord's path. Um, so it's amazing that, you know, I'm like, I said, I've been here now four years. I was at Purdue for six. I was at Xavier for six. So it's just amazing how your life goes. Yeah, and I got got my Orioles hat on. Uh, the Orioles did very well. Now, I know you. I know you're not necessarily a a baseball fan, but I'm sure you cheer for the home team. You're a Ravens fan, I believe. They just couldn't quite get it done. And I'm not a Ravens fan, by the way, but they just couldn't quite uh, uh, get it done. Um, but what about that? Like in terms of the Ravens, I know you go for them, and then I know you got to be cheering for the home team. Had a really good season last year. You know how it was growing up in Baltimore. Not, what what many good times uh, in Baltimore for the Orioles? Yeah, I mean, I, I I knew when the Ravens played the Chiefs, we didn't have a chance. Um, <laughs> I think I think Pat, Patrick Mahomes is too good. He's too poised. He's too experienced. He's too talented. And with one of the best coaches in the NFL, Andy Reid, with the best tight end, um, Travis Kelsey. So um, I thought that their experience um, really outweighed our experience. So I didn't think we had much of a chance anyway. Um, but, yeah, the Orioles had a great season, but they did the same thing the Ravens did, have a great season and then just fall apart in the playoffs. So, um, you know, th that's what you get paid for. You get paid for, you know, winning championships, not what you do in the regular season. Yeah. No, and you're right. That's that's what happened. Got, well, I think got swept by the Rangers, who ultimately won it anyway, the, the Orioles. But that, I think the Orioles, the Orioles are going to be – that they've made some really good offseason moves. And look, I know the Yankees are coming and they've done a lot, but the Orioles, I think, are going to be really, really good and more competitive this year. Yeah, they, I think they'll be good. But, you know, you got to go win a World Series. You know, you, you got to, you know, get in the playoffs. You know, that's 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 cool. But, you know, everybody want to see that jewelry. <laughs> <laughs> it, 
it, it has been since 1980. It was the 83. I think it was 83 when Rick Dempsey and Cal Ripken and Eddie Murray and that that Earl Weaver was the manager. I was that was before you were born. I did not think wow. about it. I remember, yeah, I was born in 87. I remember Cal Ripken. You know, everybody knows Cal Ripken. <laughs> right. I remember him growing up. Yeah. Landon Bussey, again, in his fourth season as the head men's basketball coach at Allcorn State, giving us a couple of moments here on Box to Row. Again, right now, the Braves are fourth in the SWAT on the road, a tough, that tough Texas stretch on Saturday at PV on Monday against Texas Southern. Coach Bussey, we really appreciate the time. Continued success to you and the Braves. Absolutely. Thanks again for having me. I really appreciate it.